Literally the room shakes with bass when you hear Candyman's voice. Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to another horror movie video where we're going to be reacting to, giving commentary on and giving a full breakdown of the trailer for Candyman 2020. Now Candyman's one of the few 2020 horror films that we have a new confirmed release date that has stayed within this year. So the last time I checked, I believe it was the 16th of October. So right around Halloween time, I'm happy with that. I feel like I can wait, but I'm also an impatient little bitch. Quite luckily though, Peel, DaCosta and Rosenfeld have been quite forthcoming when talking about the film. They've been really open about how they came up with the concept, what it's actually going to be involved with, because there's a little bit of a difference, there's a little bit of a discrepancy in terms of the original trilogy and what this film's then going to lead on from. So this film completely bypasses the events of the second and third films, so everything that's going to be in this new 2020 Candyman is only going to relate directly to the first film where obviously we've got the Candyman legend coming up and you've also got the character of Helen and what happens with her at the end. She's the new Candyman effectively. Are they going to bring her back? We do not know. Which is why, boys and girls, Kirsty's going to turn on her earphones because she nearly forgot last time and that was embarrassing. We're going to watch the trailer together. I feel like I thought my house phone was ringing and it was actually just the wee dum 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 coming out one of your phones, oh my god. Okay, so there was the original trailer that was dropped a couple of months back, three, four, five months, something like that. I think it was in February, maybe. But there's also this second trailer that's been called the Tell Everyone trailer that I have not seen. I'm not sure if this is going to be an entirely new trailer or just a recut of stuff that we've already seen, but... Only one way to find out. Okay, Candyman, 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 Candyman. How psyched would you be if he showed up? What's Candyman? <laughs> Candyman ain't a he. Candyman's the whole damn hive. A story like that, pain like that, lasts forever. I quite Candyman like this little, like, artistic, kind of art style take on it. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, that voice, man. Oh, okay, that was prelude. Now we're into the real business. Candy man. The urban legend is, if you say his name five times while looking in the mirror, he appears in the reflection and Damn right he does. How do we do that? Candyman. Well, clearly the stupid Candyman. people, but why? No, stop, Candyman. stop, please, thanks, Candyman. stop, stupidity. <sighs> well, we're still alive. Not for long, okay? Let's go. You deserve what's coming for your stupidity. Gina, you broke the door. That sounds nasty, I don't mean it, but... Oh yeah, buzz, buzz, bitch. There he goes. Oh, that sounded like guts. Oh, there the hook though. Oh, I feel really connected to this neighborhood. That's because you lived there before. Green. It was the projects. I just moved in around the corner. That's you know, baby Anthony, by the way. I'm an artist. You look up it's a nice man. continuation, actually. He's the monster that's part of this neighborhood. That's what makes Candyman so elusive. I'm hoping to spread the story. Like all because he is a legend, the there's something the like the omnipresent the about that. He doesn't have to be physically in a room. There's I just Candyman. Candyman. A vibe. Candyman. Candyman. Yes, you have the right idea. I'm with her. Don't say that. Mm-hmm. Candyman. No. Hook, hook, hook. There we go. Are we gonna see him? I wanna see. Oh, the hook looks different. Okay. Less girthy. Something's happening to me. He had a purpose for you. He's clearly losing his sanity. I guess he found me. I am the writing on the wall. Okay, there's there's a lot of like auto tune going into that voice, but it still sounds very guttural. This is not real. It's not real. Well, surprise it is. Mm. Mm -mm. 
Mm -mm. Oh, there's so much blood! Okay, I'm I'm not a mass. Well, I say I'm not a massive gore fan. I I enjoy the Saw films because I enjoy the creativity of Jigsaw as a killer. I enjoy John Kramer. Okay, I think his motivations and his concept are very very good. But in terms of you know the graphic killings, not always a fan. Feel like they detract from the story quite a lot. But there's just something about Candyman is a classic. He is just so freaking integral to horror becoming what it is and specifically 90s horror because when Candyman came out it was 1992 when the original hit screens and smacked people over the back of the head because a lot of what we got for the rest of the 90s and for the 90s up till that point was your standard quite a lot of slasher horror. Candyman is different. There's just something that hits different with Candyman and I have suddenly become really aware of the fact that there's a mirror back there and I do not want to turn round. You there? No? Tony Todd! Okay, first of all, quite liked what we saw in the trailer. For my liking, it was still just a little bit long. I would have preferred if we got something a little bit shorter, maybe cap it to about a minute, minute 20 max. I think given you got the little prelude cut and then you got the main trailer, I think it's just easier to cut your time down a little bit. It seemed like we saw quite a lot. Don't get me wrong, I think we're going to see much more in the film. Um, Candyman likes to rack up a, a kill count, <laughs> but I still think it was just, we saw a little bit too much. Concept wise, I quite like how they have related it to the first film and how they're going to bypass the other two. Um, because you've got the focus being on Anthony grown up. So we saw Anthony be rescued by Helen. She kind of went through this massive transformative character moment of self-sacrifice where she saved this little baby boy and now we're seeing him grown up and returning to this area. And I actually quite like how there's parts of the Cabrini Green neighbourhood that's changed. It's obviously modernised because time has passed. But there's still parts of it that you saw where it was like that run down Chicago city projects landscape that was just such a great backdrop for this legend. It seemed like, you know, that's where Candyman was housed, that is his home and it seems like if we didn't get that coming through, it would have been hard to really relate Candyman as the legend was told to us in the previous film. I'm not saying that this needs to be compared to the previous film, I just feel like for that presence to be felt in this film we need it to relate in some way back to the original and it seems like they've hit the nail on the head in terms of balance with that. This is probably a good time to highlight that one thing I would advise audiences against when they go to see this Candyman is not to be too attached to the original. I don't think we're not seeing a reboot or a remake scenario here. We're seeing a continuation and what looks to be a good continuation at that. There was three heads put together for this script and a lot of talent at that. So I think if there was a team that was well equipped enough to take what we got from the original and put it into a modern form of storytelling and really adapt the script to be really honest and really forthcoming with how it applies to the today's society and things like that. I, I mean, we've got it. Something I always say with horror movies is that I really appreciate the ones that make people feel genuine fear. And that doesn't come from the ones where it's like paranormal or it's ghosts or it's possessions and things like that. Not that I'm not saying whether I believe that those things are real. I just feel like when it's more relatable to your everyday life and you can relate to it more, the concept of it potentially happening to you is greater and so therefore you have a natural affinity to feel fear from it. Which in turn makes for a greater immersive experience when you're actually watching it. As I've said, Candyman is a legend, both in the character and when he appeared on screen as that character, Tony Todd became a legend as well. We have legends. I think everywhere has their own little legends, whether it's small town legends, whether it's, you know, national legends it's everyone's experienced that creepy thing that everyone kind of whispers about everyone has experienced something of that nature that they can anchor to with this film so with Candyman being this like urban legend urban myth everyone can kind of get that close to home feel and do we want me to sing the praises of the Candyman character like literally because he's a legend 
the presence of him is felt in every scene because he's always the subject of discussion or the subject of events. When this is all going on and when the story's transpiring, he doesn't even need to be in shot. He doesn't even need to be in frame. You don't need to hear his voice as creepy as it freaking is. But there is this like omnipresent quality. It's like he's in the walls, he's in the words, he's in everything. And I really hope that that's fed into a lot. It seems like it is. Definitely with Anthony's character, he feels his presence and it comes out in his art and I feel like that's a really good visual representation of this legend being everywhere. It just seeps into everyone's lives in that area. It's just... I love Candyman. I really need this to do well. Oh, please land! But I have rambled enough about this film. As you can see, I am very excited. I am a horror lover at heart. I was born in the 90s. I was very young when I started watching horror films. Arguably, should that have happened? Maybe not. But Candyman was one of those films that I saw and I was just like, oh, wow. But yes, that is all I have for now. Please let me know down in the comments what you think about this film. Are you excited? How do you feel about them bypassing the second and third films? Because I've not said it before in this video, but I wasn't too keen on the second and third. I kind of just pretended they didn't quite exist and just really went for it on the first film. But as always, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for giving it the time. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please do give it a big one of these. If you're excited for the film, then definitely give it a big one of these. Leave those below with theories, concerns, comments, general chit chat. I will put my horror movies playlist up there, something else, video playlist down there, links to my social medias all in the description. Subscribe for more videos from me. But other than that, much love you guys, stay healthy, stay safe, and I will see you very soon. Bye!